Hello, dear DSE candidates. Welcome back to my Grammar for Success channel. I am Koresh Babu, a retired lecturer in English from Hyderabad. In today's video, I am going to teach you about figures of speech part 1. Okay, and this uh, aspect is very, very important uh, for your competitive examination. Okay, and therefore, I request all of you to watch this video till the end without skipping it in the middle. I also request all of you to consider subscribing to my channel and also sharing this video with all your friends who are going to take this DSC school assistant English examination. Thank you so much and now let's get into the video. Figures of speech. What do you mean by figures of speech? Figures of speech are nothing but a deviation or a departure from an ordinary expression of ideas in order to produce greater effect. In fact, these figures of speech will enhance the language, making it more vivid, more engaging and more expressive. They are the best tools, powerful tools for the writers and speakers to convey their meaning in creative and impactful ways okay from your examination point of view they are very very important two parts are there part one part two so this is the part one so you please pay attention to the figures of speech right and uh, uh, you know already i have told you about this figures of speech are a departure from the ordinary way of expression of ideas in order to produce greater effect whatever i i teach you the same things i am putting on this slide because this will be with you forever. Whenever you watch this video, you will come across this. So that's why I am putting certain important points on the slide, right? Let me talk to you about the first uh, um, figure of speech. What is that simile? All of you know very well about this simile. I need not uh, uh, give you elaborate uh, explanation about this. Here you pay attention. Simile is nothing but a comparison okay, between two unlike objects. That means a comparison is made between two unlike objects. Okay, Unlike means different objects. But uh, uh, however, at least one point is in common. One point will be in common. So, the simile is uh, uh, usually introduced by such words as like, as or so. So, these are the important words by which this uh, simile is introduced. So, whenever you come across like, whenever you come across as or so, you must think it is uh, a simile, right? And here you pay attention, I will give you some examples. Her face is like the splendid moon. Her face is like the splendid, wonderful moon. Okay, Here we are comparing her face with the splendid moon. Of course, there are different uh, uh, can say objects. Her face is a human uh, object and this is you now a natural object. So, between these two things, one common thing is there. This moon is bright and her face is also bright. Okay, Therefore, some simile can be uh, formed in this. Similarly, she walked like a queen. So, she walked how? Like a queen. So, her walking is compared with uh, the walking of this queen, right? And here, the righteous shall flourish as the palm tree. So, here, the righteous are compared with the palm tree. The righteous means the honest, the sincere. The, peop the sincere people, the righteous people, what happens? They flourish, they prosper, how? As the palm tree. So, here, just like the palm tree flourishes, okay, these righteous people will also flourish. That is the meaning, okay? That is a comparison. So, here, in this like is used, in this as is used. So, here you go to the next example. The story is as old as the hills. So, here as as is used in this uh, example. So, the story is old just like the hills. That is the meaning. The hills are old and the story is also old. So, that is what he says. And here next example is there. U Ulysses stood like a mighty tower. So, Ulysses, you know very well. He was a great king. He stood like a mighty tower. That means here like is used here. Just like uh, a mighty tower stands, U Ulysses also stood there. 
he stood there like a mighty statue okay so this is all about simile metaphor is there this is the second one what is a metaphor a metaphor is an implied simile that is you know the hidden simile that is a simile but in the form of oh, a, a hidden way okay in the form of a hidden way so that is therefore called a, a metaphor is an implied simile it does not like the simile state that one thing is like another it doesn't say that this thing is like this this person is like that so he, he doesn't say that or acts as another but takes that for granted and this uh, metaphor says uh, directly that thing for example he is a, a dangerous and poisonous man okay take for granted and what is this man saying he is a snake that means he is poisonous and dangerous just like a snake so that thing that meaning is implied in that that meaning is there so here i will give you some examples therefore it takes that for granted and proceeds as if two things were one and here you pay attention life is a dream so here life is a dream means life is just like a dream so during the nights you get a dream morning you know it disappears it disappears from your mind you can't remember about that dream so in the same way this uh, life is also very temporary very transient that is the meaning it conveys okay and here therefore it is said life is a dream and here the camel is the ship of the desert so here we are comparing this camel with the ship but direct comparison is this okay the camel is the ship so you, you, this can also be uh, recast or rewritten like this the camel is like the ship of the desert you can also say that but you, you are dropping that like or as or such words you know you are dropping such words the camel is the ship of the desert okay yes uh, direct uh, comparison teachers are the pillars of this institute that means teachers are just like the pillars of this institute just as the pillars support the huge building the teachers will also support the students and the institution in that way so they stand very firm they stand very strong so that is what it, it conveys and here you pay attention life is a bed of thorns okay life is a dream okay is a bed of thorns thorns means here full of troubles and uh, worries and all that okay so it is a bed of thorns means life is just like a bed of thorns that means life is just like uh, the one which is full of uh, uh, troubles, worries, anxieties and what not. That is there. Right. And here direct comparison. The news was a dagger to, to his heart. So here the news is directly compared with the dagger. Actually the sentence should be the news was like a dagger to his dagger means sword or you can say knife. Generally small knife uh, that you put in the waist is called a dagger that you have come across I think in the bazaars of Hyderabad okay so the news was a dagger to his heart okay just as the dagger does harm to the heart this news also harmed him hurt him that is the meaning so in this way these this metaphor is nothing but a direct comparison that's why it's called implied simile now we go to the uh, next figure of speech personification is there this is also a very important figure of speech right what is personification in personification inanimate objects inanimate means lifeless okay lifeless objects all uh, things that we see in nature are lifeless objects okay and here abstract things they don't have physical existence abstract nouns you know very well abstract things are there that you only think of they are called abstract things. So, inanimate objects and abstract things are spoken of as having life and intelligence. They are spoken of as if they had life, as if they had intelligence. And now, uh, let me give you some examples to make you understand this. Death lays his icy hands on things. Death, no, death is lifeless, okay. It takes our life, no doubt about that, but it is lifeless. It's, it is an abstract thing. You can only think of it. You cannot see that death. So here, death, this is an abstract thing, lays his, just like a human being, this human quality is attributed to this abstract thing. Death lays his icy hands on things. That is there. So, uh, 
that is the meaning of that and here see pride goes forth see pride you know pride means arrogance this pride goes forth uh, can it go for go forth means go forward can it go forward so pride is not a human being at all okay it is only an abstract thing pride goes forth on horseback on the back of the horse and grand how is it going grand and gay gay means cheerfully grandly and comes back oh this uh, pride comes back can can pride walk and come back go away so it is not that but you are giving the human qualities and you are attributing all these things to it pride goes forth comes back on foot on foot pride comes back on begs its way can can pride beg for its way no it is not a human being at all it's only an abstract thing so here this abstract thing is spoken of as having life here death is spoken of as having life that's why you say his. So here death is spoken of as having life. Pride is spoken of as having life. And here you see that luck smiled at him. Luck, you know, it's also an abstract thing. And here luck smiled at him. Can luck smile? Can luck uh, uh, laugh? No, it cannot. But here you are speaking uh, about this luck as having life. Okay. And here opportunity again it's an abstract thing is it a human being no it is just spoken of as having life knocks on the door can this opportunity knock on the door can it knock on the door you it can't but it is said opportunity knocks on the door but once it knocks on the door only but once that means only one time it will knock on the door and the next time it doesn't knock on the door the, when it knocks on the door you must seize that opportunity you must make use of that opportunity that is what you have to do right okay and uh, the daffodils uh, this poem was written by william wordsworth uh, and in that poem the poet says that uh, the daffodils uh, dance with delightful can the daffodils these are the inanimate objects. All trees and flowers and this and that are, are taken under inanimate, lifeless objects. Though they have life, no, they are taken under lifeless objects. So here, the, what are the daffodils doing? They are dancing. These daffodils are spoken of as having life. Daffodils dance delightfully in the little breeze. right? And here, one more thing is that the hills rejoice. Can the hills rejoice? They have no life at all. They are inanimate objects okay and clap their hands will the hills clap their hands no but here you say that uh, the hills are spoken of as having life and one more example i think there is anxiety sitting on his face anxiety what is this anxiety doing it is sitting can it sit can it stand can it walk can it run no but here you are speaking about this anxiety as having life and therefore you say anxiety sitting on his face. So in this way, in all these examples, you find that uh, inanimate objects and abstract things are spoken of as having life and intelligence. This is therefore called personification. right? And you go to the uh, next uh, uh, figure of speech. Apostrophe. Apostrophe means what? An apostrophe is a direct address to the dead. You directly address the dead. That means the people that passed away. Okay. Addressing the dead people is called an apostrophe. Right. And to the absent, the people that are absent. And uh, to a personified object or idea. So, to the personified object, just now you have learnt about the personification. So, in, that, in those examples, you know, luck was personified, pride was personified and uh, opportunity was uh, personified. So, if the personified objects, so the figure of speech is a special form of personification. And here, let me give you some examples to make you understand this. Oh, death is directly talking to that death. You can't see death. Death is invisible. Death is an abstract thing. Even then, the poet is saying, Oh, death, oh, Maranama, where is thy sting? Ni mullu yakkada. And here you pay attention. Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Ni vijayam yakkada. Something like that. Oh, judgment, thou art fled to brutish beasts. 
नेक्स्ट एग्जाम्पल इज ओ सॉलिट्यूड सॉलिट्यूड मीन्स लोनलीनेस एक वेर आर दाम दैट दस हैीन इन दाई फे नाउ लेट्स मू वॉन्ट टू लर्न अबाउट द नेक्स्ट फिगर ऑफ स्पीच हाइपर बोल आर ओवर स्टेटमेंट आल ऑफ यू नो वेरी वेल अबाउट दिस इन हाइपर बोल ए स्टेटमेंट इज मेड एम्फेटिक बाई ओवर स्टेटमेंट so a statement is made emphatic emphatic means you know very effective by over statement i'll give you a few examples to make you understand this she wept an ocean of tears an ocean of tears means ame oka oka maha samudram antati kannilanu kaarchindi how is it looking is it not looking ex uh, like exaggeration so you can also call it uh, an exaggeration it's an exaggeration in telugu i am not getting uh, words to talk about that so it's an exaggeration it's an overstatement everaina oka samud maha samudra vanta kannilanu garustara so it's an overstatement overstatement is nothing but hyperbole right and here uh, when he roared when that man roared man roared you know when he shouted at the top of his voice that's the meaning when he roared means when he shouted at the top of his voice what happened the earth trembled bhumi vanikin that can the earth tremble it's an exaggeration it's a hyperbole or overstatement exaggeration overstatement hyperbole all these three things are one and the same right and you go to the next one the sea rose mountain high the sea rose that means the sea has risen up the mountain high mountain high means this big this height what is the height of the mountain it's very big it's very high so just like that mountain high the sea rose samudramu parvatam antati yettu yagasindi that's an exaggeration why man if the river were dry somebody is saying why man if the river were dry i shall fill it with my tears am i am i river endi pote cheppu na kannilla tho nimpestanu can you fill the river with your tears but this man says i shall fill it with my tears so this is an exaggeration right and one more example oh hamlet thou hast cleft my heart in twain oh hamlet thou has thou has mean this is the old english outdated english it's an it's obsolete absolute means no longer in use okay and you have that the meaning of this is you have cleft cleft means cleave means chil chuta rend so you have cleft you will chil chavu my heart in twain twain means in two pieces you na hrudaya ni rendu ga chil chavayya oh hamlet is it possible to uh, rend your uh, uh, heart rend anybody's heart sometimes we say to all these the bidda is it possible for you to uh, can say skin that fellow peel off the skin of the fellow no you cannot these are all exaggerations some some words we use them only for effect sake not for reality we only for effect sake or for emphasis sake only we say that so here also oh hamlet you have cleft my heart in twain and uh, i think one more example is there for ages i have not met him. अरे भाई वाट अबउट मोहन अरे मोहन फर् एजेस ऐ हाट मेट हिम युगा इंद्र मन चूसी अंत दट मीन नो इज नाट टू बी सीन फर् सो मेनी डेज दट मीन इट्स अ लांग टाइम इट्स एन एक्सरेशन सो इन आल दीज एक्सापल यू फैंड दट एक्सरेशन इज एंप्लायड सो इन आल दीज एक्सापल दट एक्सरेशन इज देर फॉर कॉल्ड ओवर स्टेटमेंट आर हाइपर बोर्ड राइट नव यू गो टू लर्न अबउट द नेक्स्ट फिगर आफ स्पीच euphemism is there euphemism what is euphemism euphemism consists in the description of a disagreeable thing by an agreeable one disagreeable means bad thing in other directly can say bad thing with a good thing the chedu vishayanni manchi vishayamuto cheppadam ela something is there he has fallen asleep fallen asleep means atadu nidra poyadu actually that means he is dead atadu nidrinchadu that means he passed away he died he is dead right so here this is a bad word instead of this bad word this agreeable word or good word is used fallen asleep 
స్టేట్ ఇన్ అవర్ తెలుగు స్టేట్స్ ను పీపుల్ డోంట్ సే ఆయన చచ్చిపోయాడు చనిపోయాడు దిస్ ఈస్ సబ్ స్టాండర్డ్ హి పాస్ అవే ఆయన కాలం చేశాడు యు ఆర్ స్పీకింగ్ అబౌట్ దట్ డెత్ ఇన్ ఎ పొలైట్ వే ఇన్ ఎన్ అగ్రిబే అగ్రియబుల్ మేనర్ సో హియర్ సో దిస్ గుడ్ వర్డ్ ఈస్ యూజ్డ్ టు ఇండికేట్ ద బ్యాడ్ థింగ్ ఆర్ బ్యాడ్ వర్డ్ రైట్ అండ్ వన్ మోర్ థింగ్ ఇస్ దర్ యు ఆర్ టెలింగ్ మీ అ ఫెయిరీ టేల్ ఫెయిరీ టేల్ మీన్స్ యువర్ వాట్ ఎల్ఐ అబత్ సో దిస్ ఇస్ ద బ్యాడ్ వర్డ్ సో టు ఇండికేట్ దిస్ బ్యాడ్ వర్డ్ దిస్ గుడ్ వర్డ్ ఈస్ యూజ్ ఎ ఫెయిరీ టేల్ అయ్యే కాకమ్మ కథ చెప్తున్నావు లేరా అంటే అబద్ధం ఆడుతున్నావు లేరా ఈవెన్ ఇన్ తెలుగు ఆల్సో దిస్ సచ్ థింగ్స్ ఆర్ దర్ ద స్టేట్మెంట్ ఈజ్ అన్ ఇన్వెన్షన్ ఇన్వెన్షన్ మీన్స్ Marco invented radio and uh, uh, he invented uh, Newton invented uh, gravitational uh, force and all the things you know so invention is used like that invention so the statement is an invention means generally machines are invented uh, devices are invented but here the statement is an invention invention is nothing but a cock and bull story cut to cut so instead of saying this uh, disagreeable word he has used uh, an agreeable word okay so here these are all disagreeable words or phrases and these are the agreeable phrases okay right and here you pay attention he washed off his hands in this case he washed off means ana tana chethulu kadigesukunnadu means what here he proved that he was not guilty and not involved in the case that is the meaning of that so this point you know this disagreeable point is expressed in the uh, agreeable manner okay and here he passed away yesterday here he passed away is there actually died i just now i have told you in telugu we say aina chachipoyadu aina charipoyadu this is very substandard and insulting to that man who died but here he say passed away atadu kala dharmam chesadu ati gatinchipoyadu atadu tudiswasha vidichadu something there are several things you know this this is a direct bad word disagreeable word this is what an agreeable phrase right and now you go to learn about the next figure of speech antithesis antithesis in antithesis what happens a striking opposition or contrast of words or sentiments is made in the same sentence sentence two opposite uh, things are placed side by side uh, okay the, to secure emphasis this is usually employed to secure emphasis okay bad word and good word both are placed side by side okay two striking opposition or contrasting words vibhinnamaina rendu matalu oka daggariki cherchi oka effect kosam cheppadam that is called antithesis what is that yes man proposes and god disposes man proposes god disposes okay. to err is human john dryden's uh, quotation to err is human to forgive is divine see these two things are placed side by side tappu cheyuta manava sahajam kevinchuta devurin naizam something like that and uh, here two things are placed side. speech is silver and silence is golden two things are comma so these two things are there speech is silver and silence is so in while by saying these things you know you are you know giving some emphasis to this fact you are giving emphasis giving emphasis to this fact give forgive god disposes whatever man proposes to do god will dispose of without god's consent you cannot propose anything you cannot do anything a devun yokka aagna lekunda emi cheyadam kudaradu something like that and uh, so in all these things uh, okay they are given uh, em- emphasis and here come to learn and go to sir how nice is this come to learn go to serve ochi nerchukondi velli seva cheyandi how nice it is and here united we stand divided we fall united we stand manam aikyanga unte manam sthiranga untam divided we fall vidipothe padipothamu kalisunte man nilabadtamu something like it in telugu okay it's all right and here it's very interesting and god made the country and man made the town two things are you know striking opposition or contrast of words and sentiments the two things are quite opposite devudu deshanni jeste manishi 
Taunu Cheshadu, something like that. So, in, in, these are very beautiful examples. Okay, you please follow this uh, uh, antithesis, this figure of speech. And now let us go to learn about uh, the next figure of speech. Oxymoron is there, very interesting, very important. Oxymoron is a special form of antithesis. It is a special form. It is an antithesis, but it is a special form of antithesis whereby two contradictory qualities are predicted of the same thing. Two contradictory means opposite qualities are predicted of the same thing. How? Let us see that. That is oxymoron. He is regularly irregular. Regular guy irregular. See, you are saying regularly but irregular. See, these two things are contradictory qualities. Is regularly irregular to the physics classes. So innocent arch, so cunningly simple. He looks so innocent, but cunningly simple. That's how nice it is. He is cunningly simple. Chala cunning in a twenty simple counter. And here he is a friendly enemy. Wow. How can it be so? He is he is, he is a friendly enemy. Sneha Purita Maina Shatru. You are always saying friendly, but at the same time enemy. These two things are contradictory. These two things are cunning and simple, contradictory, regularly irregular, contradictory. So like that, these two contradictory, busiest lazy woman. You are saying busy, busiest, but lazy. Busy is opposite to being lazy. Okay, But here, busiest lazy woman. Okay, These two things are uh, contradictory words or qualities. Okay, and here he is an honorable villain. He is a villain, but an honorable one. See, these two words are contradictory, 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 contradictory. Okay, and here he is a cheerful pessimist. Pessimist means, you know very well, one who looks at the dark side of things. So, here cheerful pessimist. Pessimist cannot be cheerful. These two things are opposite. Cheerful, these two things are opposite and unwilling volunteer. She, he, she accepted the kind of cruelty. Kind. You are saying kind but cruelty of the surgeon's knife. Surgeon cuts the body, uh, performs an operation. So here kind, it is a kind act but at the same time cruel because he is using a knife. So kind cruelty, these two, kind opposite is cruel. So here uh, these two things are contradictory qualities. So they are placed side by side only you know about the same thing. He is our dear idiot son. See, you are saying dear, but at the same time idiot. He is in my he is our dear idiot son. Sometimes I shall be calling my younger grandson. You are my uh, sweet dirty goose. I say sweet but dirty goose. So it's like that. Yes, dirty goose cannot be sweet, sweet in the sense very agreeable and all that. Okay, here. So he is our dear idiot son. Okay, last example I think I have given you. Parting is a sweet sorrow. So you are saying sweet at the same time sorrow. Sorrow is always bitter, but how can it be sweet? So sweet sorrow. It cannot be. So here in this way, the two contradictory qualities are predicted or placed in the, in the sentence side by side. That is called oxymoron. Right. You go to learn about the next figure of speech. Epigram is there. What is an epigram? An epigram is a brief pointed saying. Very brief pointed saying, frequently introducing antithetical ideas. Antithetical means quite opposite ideas which excite surprise and arrest attention. How you are looking at it? The child is father of the man. You are saying father at the same time, man. Father of the man. Okay. These two th ideas are antithetical. Antithetical means, see, uh, opposite. And here you see the next example, in the midst of life, uh, we are in death. So this is in uh, antithetical idea. We are in the midst of life, we are in death. Of life, in the midst of life, we are in death. Life and death, see these are the antithetical ideas in the same exam. So this, this will excite your surprise and arrest your attention. In the midst of life, we are in death, we are in problems, we are in worries. That is the meaning of this, right? And here, Art lies in concealing art. Art lies 
కళ ఇక్కడ ఉంటుందట ఇన్ కన్సీలింగ్ ఆర్ట్ దాచిపెట్టడంలోనే ఉంటుంది సో హియర్ ఆర్ట్ లైస్ అంటున్నాం దెన్ యూ సే కన్సీలింగ్ ఆర్ట్ లయింగ్ కన్సీలింగ్ దీస్ టూ థింగ్స్ ఆర్ యాంటీథెటికల్ ఐడియా అండ్ హియర్ సి పన్ ఇస్ దేర్ ఏ పన్ యు నో వెరీ వెల్ కన్సిస్ట్ ఇన్ ద యూస్ ఆఫ్ ఎ వర్డ్ ఇన్ సచ్ ఎ వే దట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ క్యాపబుల్ ఆఫ్ మోర్ దెన్ వన్ అప్లికేషన్ మోర్ దెన్ వన్ మీనింగ్ the object to being to produce ludicrous effect ludicrous means humorous effect to bring about the humorous effect the pun is generally employed in the poetry or in prose okay right and here you pay attention to one or two examples i'll give you here it is is it life worth living is life worth living jeevitamu jeevinchadagina dena worth living so it all depends upon the liver so one who lives is called a liver but liver has another meaning what is that liver if that liver gets damaged you know man cannot uh, live hepatitis b or c or whatever it is something is there you know if it gets uh, damaged in them it gets expanded sometime it gets damaged that when that is the case you know if your liver is not in good condition you don't feel hungry at all because uh, this is only this liver is only the uh, part of the body uh, that makes you live a uh, very happily okay here the liver is it all depends upon the liver liver has an, one meaning what is that jeevinche word liver has another meaning uh, liver that you know very well okay here an ambassador is an honest man you know very well an ambassador who lies abroad for the good of his country who lies abroad lies okay here this is you know lying is there it has got uh, uh, one meaning you know lying abroad means uh, what is it taking rest uh, uh, in the foreign countries taking rest lie has got two meanings lying taking rest lying telling uh, uh, lies lying what are you doing i am lying on a bed and lying also has got another me telling lies so this uh, ambassador you know he lies abroad means one meaning is he takes rest abroad that means in the foreign country and he also tells lies in the foreign countries for the good of his country so this lies your liver fun, fun can be found in these two words and one more example i think there is he is too much of a bear to bear the bear this calmly he is too much of a bear to bear this calmly bear means one meaning barinchita bear has another meaning elugbanti something so here this has got two meanings right to bear this calmly right so in this way pun means a word having two different meanings okay it depends on the person who takes that meaning now let's go on we want to learn about uh, the remaining uh, figures of speech irony is there it's very very important irony is a mode of speech it's a kind of speech in which what happens the real meaning is ex is exactly the opposite of what is literally conveyed what is conveyed is one thing and the exactly opposite of that you have to take the meaning oh is a very good man i know i know he is a very good man so you are uh, saying these words ironically that means he is a bad man so when uh, sometimes you happen to say that okay here uh, uh, one or two examples are given to make you understand this very simple and uh, uh, you know very well this uh, here under leave of brutus whenever you come across the name of brutus you immediately find out that it is uh, william shakespeare julius caesar so in that julius caesar uh, drama what happened this brutus and uh, his uh, co conspirators uh, killed this uh, julius caesar Julius Caesar was the emperor of that Roman uh, empire so he killed this Julius Caesar and now in that funeral he was uh, this uh, Julius Caesar's friend that is uh, Mark Antony is there this Mark Antony was allowed to speak about this Julius Caesar because Julius Caesar was Mark Antony's close friend very good friend so here this uh, these wo these words are spoken by this Mark Antony 
and you see the irony of uh, his words he say here under leave of brutus and the rest come i this line is not there okay um, come i to speak in caesar's funeral come i i came here to speak in caesar's funeral clear he was my friend this uh, julius caesar was my friend he was faithful and just he was faithful and honest to me right and but brutus says he was ambitious ambitious means in other words greedy though julius caesar did good to that uh, empire to did good to the people in that uh, in his country in okay uh, in this roman empire what happened here this brutus is calling him ambitious calling him greedy that means you know here this mark antony says but brutus says he was ambitious alanti manchi mitrunni atadu oka greedy man antunnadu greedy man and the the opposite of this ambitious is, is a very good man selfless man nisvardhaparudaina vyakti so this meaning the literally conveyed is one is one uh, word but the opposite of the real meaning is this one he should say he was selfless instead of that he said he was ambitious right and but brutus is an honorable man and mark antony says brutus is an honorable man honorable means what a respectable man okay like that but here you have to take the opposite meaning of that dishonorable man a gauravaniya man vyakti gauravaniya man vyakti ka a gauravaniya so here he was he but he is an honorable man ah chala gauravaniyamaina vyakti endukante aina julius caesar nu greedy man antunnadu ante julius caesar oka selfless man kabatti tadaka dishonorable man ani cheppadame that is the meaning of this passage you know very well about this julius caesar drama of william shakespeare yes and one more example is given you are a very fine friend to forsake me in my trouble in my trouble you have forsaken me what a fine friend you are kashtalalo nannu odilesha enta manchi mitrudu avara nu enta manchi mitrudu avara antaru anta cheddodu ira anta right so this is giving quite opposite meaning right and this is an irony this is an irony this is an irony right and what a fine mess of things you have made oh what a fine mess of things you have made Mess means uh, you can say um, spoiling the things. Kalagam polagam chera. What a mess of things! Fine mess of things. Abba, yenta manchi ka kalagam polagam jeesh petta abra abba vastu lan intro vi. Ante anta chanda alang jeesh shavan thangi kambi. So this is what it is. It is an irony. Okay, so irony is over, and now we are going to learn about uh, uh, the next uh, figure of speech, metonym. metonym okay metonym don't say metonymy like that metonym right and in metonymy literally a change of name what is metonymy met change metonymy a thing is thing or concept is referred to by the name of something closely associated with that thing or concept so a thing or concept is referred to by the name of something a different thing that is closely associated with that uh, thing or concept a thing is uh, is referred to oka vishayanni oka maata tho cheptadu aa maata ee maata tho associate ayye untundi how let us see that here the bench bench means is not uh, uh, the school bench bench means it is used for the judges high court bench means high court judges and here you say that the crown means the it is the crown is used for the king the crown the crown is the king so this word is used to indicate this one a thing is referred to by the name of something that means king is referred to by the name of something judges are referred to by bench king is referred to by crown sailors are referred to by jockets blue jockets means sailors because the sailors wear the blue jockets right and here red coats means british soldier so for british soldiers you know red coats they are referred to by this word as yes, red coats so in this way these are referred to by these names that are closely associated with them veerini veela veeti tho refer chesar endukante ee ivanni veeriki ati daggarlo untayi crown raju ku daggaraga untayi Blue jackets, sailors, bench, judges, courts, British soldiers. Sir. 
So, uh, that is called metonymy, right. And here, uh, one more example is given, the White House. White House means what? The official residence of US President, the White House. The White House released the statement, issued the statement, something like that. So, in this way, this is there. Now, we go to learn about the uh, other things. Note, since there are many kinds of association with objects, there are several varieties of metonymy. There are several kinds of metony. So, here you see that uh, the sign for the person or thing symbolized. So, here uh, the sign for the person, some sign is used for the person or thing. What is that? Uh, here you see, you may address the chair. This chair is used for chairman. Please address the chair. Address chair means chair is used for who? Who will sit in the chair? The chairman will sit in the chair. And therefore, this man is referred to by this word. So, therefore, that is called metonym, right. And here, we have to toil from the cradle to the grave. Cradle. That means what? From infancy, to death, maranam varaku. Here, cradle means infancy, grave means death. They are, these two words are associated with these things. Infancy is associated with the cradle and the death is associated with the grave. It's like that. And uh, the second variety is also there, the container for the thing contained. The container for the thing contained. A vastu undeta twenty vastu dwara kuda metonym ustundi. Ela, here the kettle. Kettle means what? What is there in the kettle? Tea. Not coffee, but tea. Tea is boiled. You know? The kettle is boiling. Kettle is boiling means tea is boiling. So, this word is at, associated with this. This word is associated with this. Tea and tene kettle. Kettle long to the government. Kettle. The kettle is boiling. How nice it is. You see, fourth with it drank the fatal cup. Fatal cup means in other words. Fatal means dangerous cup. You know, Socrates drank the fatal cup. Fatal cup means that uh, uh, poison. So here, fatal cup. This word is associated with this uh, uh, this phrase, okay? And this phrase is associated with this poison. And uh, the whole city went out to see the victorious general. The whole city means what? Nagaramanta. The nagaramanta. The avuranta boy. Uru boy indaledu. Nagaramanta, the people of the entire city. That's the mean. That's why Gurzada says, you know, Deshamante Matikadu, Deshamante Manishil. So here the whole city means the people of the entire city. That's the mean. So here these uh, this uh, this phrase is uh, referred to by this uh, uh, word whole city, right? And uh, it is like that, and this is called uh, the varieties of metonym. Now let us go to learn about the next figure of speech. Third one is that the instrument for the agent. Sometimes this metonym can be found in the instrument for the agent. Okay, how? Let us see. The pen. Pen means not the real pen, but knowledge. This is associated with this. This is referred to by the pen. Mightier than the sword. Okay, so it means what physical strength. This physical strength is referred to by this word sword. Bujabalamante kati, telvitetalante pen. So you know instrument. And uh, here the author for his works, the author for his works. So for the works, we are now reading Milton. We are now reading Milton means what? We are reading Milton's poetry, that's the meaning only. So this Milton's poetry is referred to by his name. Okay, this is another variety of uh, metonym. And uh, here, do you learn Archimedes in your school? Archimedes? No, Archimedes in this Gurinch in Echkonava. Archimedes in Gurinch and Archimedes principles. That's that. So, this Archimedes principles are referred to by this name Archimedes. And now, let's go to learn about the next uh, figure of speech. Climax is there. Climax is the arrangement of series of ideas in the order of increasing importance. The words are arranged in such a way that uh, they are in the ascending order. Increasing importance, okay. Uh, for example, he walked, you walk first, 
he ran after walking ran he flew atan nadichadu atan parigettadu tan egri poya so walked ran flew increasing importance ascending order here see he begs low level lies abaddam aadam steals dongilinchadu kills see sam beda dana dharma dando something like you know, i can well remember so here begs lies steals kills uh, in an order ascending order here third example is there what a piece of work is man he how noble in reason how infinite in uh, in faculties how like an angel how like a god see in noble in reason infinite in faculties step next step like an angel like a god superior so these all these blue colored phrases can be arranged in an ascending order according to so increasing importance okay ascending order but increase in the form of increasing importance okay right and now with this uh, this video comes to an end the remaining uh, figures of speech will be continued in the uh, second part of the video dear dc candidates thank you so much for watching this uh, video on figures of speech uh, if at all you face any problem in understanding anything please tell me in the comment section i am ready to answer uh, your question or your doubt or anything whatever it is so with uh, the second part of this video i should be back to you until then bye see you all of you okay right